know I'm a little bit late on this one, but we're going to talk Heath and his departure here from Impact. And we're still Impact, right? We're not TNA till the top of the year. Someone correct me if I'm wrong on that one. I really haven't been on Twitter a whole lot lately, so someone correct me if I'm wrong. If it's still Impact, it's going to be Impact here on the channel. Speaking of, though, if you haven't checked out my mini podcast talking about the change from Impact to TNA, definitely check that one out. And um, I hope that people did not take it. There, there was a negative aspect to what I was doing, but it was all going into a positive place. I do tear down Impact pretty hard. But I'm also letting you know I'm I'm in support of in, in support of the name change to TNA. TN, or Impact brought us really good wrestling, probably the best wrestling we've had since the glory days of TNA. But there were a lot of bad things under the Impact banner as well. And my point for bringing all those to the forefront, all those things, is to let you know sky's the limit. There are so many different aspects, different categories, different things, just little details that Impact can fix to where they go into this new era of TNA and it takes off. Like sky's the limit for what they can do, but they have a unique opportunity right now to fix everything that didn't work up to this point. So definitely check that out. But let's talk Heath here. I don't dislike Heath by any means, but this is the exact type of wrestler from the roster that actually needs to be gone. Now he had a really, really weird run. I would imagine he was under a salary because I don't know who else would turn down a, a return to WWE and one of their contracts to say, I'm going to stay here. Let's let's freaking be real. Okay. So I would imagine he had a pretty good deal with impact. He didn't wrestle a whole lot. I feel like I didn't see this guy wrestle five times in three years. Now I'm exaggerating a little bit, but he definitely did not wrestle a whole lot. There was a lot of um, attacks during matches, after matches, coming and hit the wake-up call. There was a lot of that, but there wasn't a lot of wrestling. There wasn't a lot of, from a storyline-wise, there was not a lot to sink your teeth into. He feuded with Violent by Design. No one cared. He, I don't even know if it was violent by design or the design. I don't, I don't remember. And then he feuded with uh, Honor No More. And at that point, no one really cared about them either. But Heath was over with the company. Let's not get that confused at all. Heath was over. But this was the kind of, the exact kind of person that's on this roster that they need less of. And what do I mean by that? So when he was released by WWE, he was somebody I was like, I would like to see them in Impact because I think, uh, you know, coming over here, reinventing himself a little bit, I think he could, you know, do something. He has kind of a cult following. He got kind of jacked. So I was like, you know what? He could probably come over and really, I mean, possibly be a main eventer. But what happens? He comes over. They continue the free agent storyline. They spend months where he is begging for a job in Impact Wrestling. I mean, this guy comes from the biggest wrestling company in the world who is his, who is uh, notorious for historically signing WWE wrestlers and pushing them to the top of the card. They're notorious for this, but he shows up and they've got him begging for a job. So they continue the free agent storyline that was kind of he was kind of doing in WWE. And then they pair him with Rhino, trying to recapture the magic of Heath and Rhino. And he's still doing the oh baby. There's Absolutely no different. There was no rebranding of this character. He didn't take any swings. Impact didn't take any swings because Impact wanted him to be Heath Slater. 
Now, I always thought she he should have come in as Heath Miller. I always thought just the regular Heath name was kind of weird. I think that's really poor branding, sing, singular names. It's really hard to know who you're talking about half the time. But, you know, he did nothing. They put the freaking tag team titles on him. And again, dude, I like this guy. I thought there was something you could have done with him. And one of the things I've been saying recently is that in the past, the success is bringing mid-carters over from WWE and really allowing them to just reinvent. Don't let them go crazy. Don't let, like, Tony Khan, like, oh, do whatever you want when you get here. We, we don't want that. But we want them to get creative, come up with new ideas, and just present a different version of themselves. And we didn't get that from him. I truly feel, I think part of it's on him, but I truly feel Impact wanted Heath Slater. They didn't want Heath Miller. And they really got to get away from having that mindset and having those kind of signings. If you're going to bring someone over, stop trying to ride the coattails of what they kind of did before. Don't try to rehash old storylines. You know, the the free agent, the Heath and Rhino, that he got kids. You know, they try to play into that for a little bit. And they, they got away from it. But have some fucking balls. Have some fucking balls. I just hope in this new era of TNA, we're not getting those WWE mid-card signings who are versions of their WWE gimmicks. Because if you do that, what are you doing different than what TNA did when Hogan was around and Bischoff was around, which really started tanking the company? So this is one of those departures, probably a good thing. It's not a huge loss. Yes, he was over with the audience, but there's no room for this kind of character in the new TNA. And I'm going to say the same for Big Con. Uh, Dirty Dango has saved himself. Um, there's someone else on the roster. It's escaping me at the moment. Even Trinity to an extent, but Tr- Trinity is a, a star, so she can kind of get away with it. But I know there's someone else on the roster right now. They're just, I, I can't think at the moment, but just versions of their WWE character. And uh, I'm getting ready to talk about NWA Sawin here in a little bit uh, when I'm done recording here. But Matt Cardona showed up in uh, NWA, and I know he showed up at Bound for Glory too. But the version that shows up at NWA, it just blows my mind that Impact doesn't want that version of him. The one where he's really reinventing who Matt Cardona is because they want Zack Ryder in the company. So it just it's time to get away from that mindset in 2024, starting with Hard to Kill. 